And we're joining the next race. This is the Grand Challenge Cup. This is the international racing. We have Leander Club, which is actually the GB8. And then Australia on the other side. And I couldn't be joined by a better man to talk about this race than Greg Sell. Greg Sell, you raced with some of these gentlemen in 2012. What are we seeing here? So this is the semi-final of the Grand Challenge Cup. I raced against these Australians, seeing in there um, Fergus Pregnoy in the stroke seat. He stroked this eight when I raced them in the semi-final here at Henley in 2010. We were able to beat them then, and the Australians haven't got a great history here, and they want to really turn that around up against the Great Britain eight here today. Yeah, absolutely. And I was speaking to their coach, Tim McLaren, in the boat tents. Tim, such a technician, and he's recently started working with this Australian A. And I think it'll be interesting to see how that makes a difference for the great Britain A. We've watched them race in Varese. They won on that occasion, the World Cup, just a couple of weeks ago. We'll see them again in Lucerne, but here they're on home ground. They're at Henley for Regatta. They're in the semi final of the Grand Challenge Cup. Up. What an amazing start for them, Greg. Yeah, so the Great Britain 8, we saw them up close there. They've made a really nice start here. They're squeezing out, trying to take as much advantage as they can off the start. Look at that wind on the course. Look at that Union, that uh, cross of St George, showing the headwind the boys are rowing into here. They're doing a nice job, the British here, of holding the finishes in into this kind of breeze and trying to squeeze away as they're coming down here towards the barrier. It's not going to be a record day, but I think they'll be pretty pleased with squeezing out to nearly three quarters of the length here. Yeah, absolutely. What I always used to be concerned about in a headwind is the wind getting underneath the spoon of the blade and it just starting to wave. Wave at our parents, we used to call it, if you start to see that on the video. And perhaps we can see that happening a tiny bit here, but the Great Britain 8, they're managing this very difficult wind. Just look at those um, flags on there, those white and blue and red flags, they're flapping all over the place, suggesting it's swirling as much. But we are looking at Will Satt, the back of Cox, Phelan Hill, George Nass sitting behind him. They will be pleased with this stop. The Australians, they've got all the racing to do right now. Yeah, the British will be trying to break contact here because they've got through that early phase, coming through the barrier into this middle phase of the race where the crews get further away from the land, further away from that support that we all know you get at Henley. And this is the slightly empty period of the race and they want to make these Australians feel as empty as possible. The Australians, on the other hand, want to use that good technique. You talked about Tim McLaren being a very effective technician. Um, has he got the horsepower in this eight? That really is the question for the Australians. And that's the question they'll be asking as they come towards the World Championships later in this year where there's only five places to qualify for the Olympic Games. And that's a big prize for all of them, yeah. as we get this lovely shot here of the British really looking strong and in control. Um, but I know it'll be hurting them. They won't want to give anything away here. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be on Lake Egbelet in uh, September. But right now, we're at Henley Royal Regatta. We're in July. And look at that gap, Greg. They have opened up. We're looking at the British eight versus the Australian eight. And the British eight, fresh out of their victory in Varese. They've come to this regatta. We can see Will Satch there with George Max just behind Alex Gregory. We've had him doing commentary for us. He's busy doing the work today. We're keeping him out of the commentary box. Mo Sibi, Paul Bennett, Pete Reed in the three seats there. Costantin Lulodis, he's back from injury, back from his finals and back from the Oxford boat race campaign. Bowman back, Goswell, and they will be enjoying this. The crowds are out, the wind is out, but it's not stopping the British eight, Greg. Yeah, that's right. The Great Britain, they have raced the European Championships. They're racing the World Cup. The Australians maybe just come over to Europe, so they'll hope they're going to be able to do fast, do better when they get to Lucerne. Um, this is not going to be the sort of performance they'll have wanted when they've now started racing here in, in European soil. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because this match racing that we're looking at, it can feel very exposed as an athlete. In six-lane racing, if you're in this position, there were po could possibly be four other boats who are between the Australian boat and the British boat. And that gives the Australians something to work against. But, you know, at the moment, they won't be feeling much from the British boat, Greg. No, they won't be feeling, they'll be feeling the puddles, unfortunately. They'll be feeling a little bit of a wake. And um, I've got to say, Phelan Hill is steering a lovely line there, right down close enough to those booms um, that he's giving his, giving his crew the best possible chance and making it difficult, really, for the Australians, as they'll be feeling just a little bit of the bow weight coming down onto them. And you can see the water just not looking smooth and calm. There's a few little gusts of wind on it. 
um, as we see um, yeah, Matt Gottschall there on the bow seat. He used to be a sailor, um, so he's used to gusts of wind on his back, so he's a good man to have in the, in the back of the boat there. Stan Aludis in front of him, as you say. He's been doing his finals at Oxford, he's come back into this eight. That'll strengthen the British eight yet more, even though they've been beating the Germans recently, and it looks like we're going to see them racing the German eight who will wait the winners of this one in the final tomorrow. Yeah, no, absolutely. The German eight is waiting in the final. They got the bye, if you like, through in the um, uh, selection part of the race. They were pulled out to go in straight into Sunday. The um, British eight, they were pulled out to race in this semi-final against this Australian crew. But look at that, they will be enjoying this, Greg. These guys, they train so hard and look at them. This is what it's about, racing. This is the enjoying the pain moment where I think uh, it's going to be hurting so much. But Will Satch there, look at him taking a look off to his right. He'll be looking to see if he can see one of those right regatta magazines that are around with his face all over them uh, that we see all over Henley. Um, whether anyone's waving them at you today, Will, maybe not yet. Uh, maybe if you meet the Germans tomorrow, they might be cheering and shouting your name. Uh, but they're coming down here, they look fantastic. This is a great win. It's going to hurt. We're going to love this moment. Let's see if they can feel it again tomorrow when they race the Germany. Yeah, absolutely. This is a fantastic performance by the great Britain men's eight. They have made short work of the Australians. They made their running off the start. They got themselves up to a length lead. We saw it actually go out to nearly a length and a half. And now, as they come past the absolutely packed enclosure, there they are, a length and a half maybe there. They have booked their place to meet the Germans in the final of the Grand Challenge Cup. Henry Rowan, Clara Regatta, Saturday. We have finalists. Yeah, no, fantastic that they've made it through to the final with the Germans. Let's look forward to that one tomorrow. Yeah, really good. And you see them, they're going to be paddling back to the boat tent. Will search Phelan Hill. It looks great. And look at those start pictures. You can absolutely see the power in the athletes. They go off that first stroke. These big guys have to be so technical and move so fast in an eight, Greg. Yeah, that's right. It's all about the efficiency of the eight that I think um, not only do you have to get the power down, but now we want to make sure none of it's wasted. And, and we'll see some eights who won't look as tidy as these. And you see these are big men. They probably are the biggest men at the regatta within the, the international eight. But you also want to be the most technical too, and that's what wins Olympic medals. That's what makes them world champions, and all of that Great Britain 8 are world champions already. Absolutely, Great Britain 8 there. They're representing their clubs today. That's why they're wearing those different strips. You can see the Molsey Rowing Club, the Leander Club, the Oxford um, strip at Constantine's wearing um, bright colours. One unit, British men's eight, finalists of the Grand.